Hey everyone, I've got a great game for you today. This game was played in the year 1851 in London between Adolf Anderson, the German player, and Lionel Kaiseritsky, a Russian player. Now this game was a friendly, but it was actually quite insane. And the game kicked off with Anderson playing as white and Kieretsky playing with the black pieces. And Anderson began with 1e4, e5 was played, and now f4, the king's gambit. This was very fashionable during the 1800s. And actually, interestingly, Kasparov wrote in his great predecessor's book that it was seen as disrespectful to decline the gambit. Uh, so in this position, black actually accepted it and played e takes f4. And we're into the gambit variation. And White now continued developing their bishop with bishop to c4, gaining some early developments and eyeing up the f7 pawn. Black then played queen h4 check. And for all you new players, if White now decided to block this with the move g3, this is absolutely disastrous for White because then Black can just play f takes g3. And Black's queen can take on e4 with check or possibly play g2 with check or pawn takes h2 with check because then it'll be a discover check using the queen on h4. So after queen h4 check, white now plays king to f1. Uh, they give up castling rights, but white now gains a good lead in development, as we'll see. But interestingly, Kaiserski now played a very interesting line. He played the move b5. It's sort of like a reverse Evans Gambit. Um, and Kasparov actually played Nigel Short in an exhibition match uh, in this position. And in this game, Adolf Anderson now played bishop takes b5, accepts the pawn. And to be honest, it's really hard to see what black gains from this. The point is that the bishop has moved away from his diagonal, where it's attacking f7. But again, black's given back a pawn, and again has no development whatsoever. Oh, okay, so black now plays knight to f6, develops a knight, attacks the e4 pawn, and white also develops with knight to f3, hitting the queen. Now, there's basically two candidate moves here. Uh, queen h5 is one of them, where you can hit the bishop on b5, but after this move, white could develop with knight to c3, which protects the bishop, and if black continues with bishop to b7, uh, white's actually got a really good position after d3, attacking f4, and white's got a nice lead in development, and it's still equal material. So in the game, queen h6 was now played by black. Now I want to take a moment to pause here, because there was actually a more modern game played in this position. It was basically forced upon Kasparov to play this position in an exhibition match against Nigel Short. And in this game, uh, Kasparov said he were, probably would have resigned here if he was black. Uh, but the game actually went on with knight to c3, g5, and then white played d4. And in this game, Kasparov played bishop to b7, and Short just played h4. And after rook to g8 from Kasparov, there was king to g1, pawn takes h4, rook takes, and now black just gets smashed off the board. Black threatens mate on g2, but after queen e2 to defend, black plays knight takes e4, and white's just winning now after rook takes f4. Black can try and defend this knight on e4, but then just comes knight to h4, hitting the queen, Queen g3, and then the finish, knight takes e4, and short went on to win this game. So this position is actually considered really bad for black, but let's just see what happens and how it continued. So white played the move d3, defends the e4 pawn, and black now played knight to h5. A very sneaky move, prepares knight g3 check, and it stops white from taking because the queen pins the h pawn against this rook. The best move here then is actually just to play rook to g1 and get off the h file and play a move like g4 because actually this bishop pins this f pawn so if white manages to play g4 there's no on pass on here because it's pinned. Saying that though in the game Anderson now just played knight to h4 instead. Rook g1 was definitely a stronger move, uh, knight h4 was considered not as good. Queen g5 was played which hits the knight but it does jump in to f5. Now the best move for black here is to actually hit the knight again with g6. White should now counterattack if this was played and hit the queen. But black can retreat the queen backwards to f6. And after this move, white should now play knight to c3. And there's a quite an interesting point here. If g takes f5, then white can just play queen takes h5. So that's no problem for white. 
So c6 is actually the best move for black here. And then white can just play bishop to a4. After knight to a6, this position is actually given as very unclear for both sides. Uh, but interestingly, the computer actually gives it as dead equal. But well, it's a complete horror show, this position. And it's very hard to decide who's going to win this game. So I guess it's all to play for. So certainly g6 would have been an interesting move for black. However, they played c6, hits the bishop on b5. And now white should have probably played bishop to a4. A very simple move, just moving their piece away from the pawn. And if play continued on with the move g6, then white can just play knight to g3. Again, the f-pawn is pinned. And after takes, 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 and knight to c3. Bishop to c5 and queen to e1 to defend f2. Queen takes queen, king takes g5 to protect f4 from the bishop. Rook h5 to hit g5 and bishop to e7. White can now play the very nice move, just play g3. Uh, sack a pawn, but white will gain loads of material. For instance, in this position, if f takes g3, white has bishop takes. Uh, and if bishop takes, is rook takes, and white will pick up the g pawn at a later date. So basically, this g3 move just wrecks black's pawn structure. But Anderson didn't play the most popular move, or the move that you'd probably expect any other player to play. He played now g4, amazingly, hits the knight on h5, but his bishop is still attacked on b5. So black now retreated their knight backwards, played knight to f6, makes a lot of sense, attacks g4, and Anderson just ignored the protection of his bishop on b5. So he basically sacked a piece here for some great counterplay. He played the move rook to g1. So again, his bishop is still attacked, but this rook now protects the g-pawn. And we'll see what happens now, because black does take the bishop off. C takes b5 is played. And here's Anderson's compensation. He plays h4. Hits the queen. The queen's only got one square to go to. Queen g6. Anderson now plays h5. Again, the queen's got one more square to go to. Queen back to g5. And Anderson plays queen to f3. Hits the pawn on f4 twice. And he's going to take with the bishop next move. And there's no way for black to defend this pawn now. So black did the logical thing and made some space for the queen. So he played knight to g8, retreating his knight backwards, making some space for the queen to go along this diagonal. And Anderson continued with bishop takes f4. Hits the queen and black now played queen to f6. If we tally up the pieces at this moment in time, white's actually a bishop down but has a pawn compensation for it. However, look at white's position. They've got a massive lead in development and certainly has the initiative. Anderson completed his development with knight to c3. Threatens to take on b5, threatens to play knight to d5 and hit the queen, and also has ideas of knight to c7. So you definitely can say white's got full compensation for the bishop. There's a few moves that black can play in this position. One of them, one of the options, was bishop to b7 to stop knight to d5. However, if this happens, there's knight takes b5, threatens knight to c7, check. If queen takes b2 from black, knight c7, check could be played. King d8 is the only move and white can play king to g2. And even after queen takes c2 from black, white's absolutely fine after king to h3 because the king is now very safe and the knight now threatens to take on a8. And I continued this with the computer moves. The computer now suggested black to play knight to a6. And how does white gain an advantage out of this? Well he should play knight takes a8, bishop takes a8 and play rook to c1. If the queen goes back to a4, white can continue their attack with queen to e3, threatening the a7 pawn. And if uh, knight to h6 to develop, white can continue with queen takes a7, attacking the bishop. And let's say bishop to c6, white has knight to d4. And this is how white should continue their attack. In this variation, white's got two pawns for the piece. But look at black's king. It's in a terrible situation and has a lot of weak squares surrounding it. So you fully expect white to be able to open up the position and make the black king here. So that's what happens if bishop to b7 was played. However, black now played bishop c5 instead, attacking the rook on g1. But now Anderson goes in for the kill, plays knight d5, attacks the queen, and prepares knight to c7 check. Black plays queen takes b2, threatens to take the rook on a1. And now here the commentators actually say that d4 is the best move for white. Point being, if queen takes a1 with check, the king moves to g2, the bishop and the queen are attacked at the same time. So if queen to b2, there's d takes c5, 
If knight to a6 to stop knight to c7, white can continue with knight d6 check, king f8, and then play bishop to e5. The queen's threatening mate on f7, and even after queen takes c2, king h3, f6 to stop the mate. White now finishes with knight takes f6. A discovered attack is coming, and if black takes this off with the pawn of the knight, so let's say knight takes f6, white can just finish with bishop takes. And again, if pawn takes bishop, there's queen takes pawn, check, king g8, and queen f7 is checkmate. So the idea is just for white to smash open black's position with d4. Anderson, though, played a different move. He played bishop to d6 here, which is actually considered a bad move. And the reason why is because there's actually a perpetual check here, and black actually gets a good position. After queen takes a1 in this position with check, king to e2, queen to b2, and then bishop takes c5. Black can play queen takes c2 with check. After king f1, black has queen takes c5, and all of a sudden, there's actually no mating patterns for white here, and white's a lot of material down. So the only option is to play queen f4, threatens queen e5 with some mate ideas. Black can play f6 though, and again, there's no mating ideas for white in this position. And this forces white to perpetual check. Knight d6 is the best move. After king d8, there's knight f7 check, king e8, and just go backwards, knight to d6, king d8, and knight to f7. A perpetual check and a draw on game. The point being is if white stops perpetual checking, eventually black will develop more pieces. White's just not got enough material anymore to finish off the job. However, after bishop d6 by Anderson, black missed this queen takes a1 idea. That was the best move, but instead black now played bishop takes g1. The point is there's no check anymore, so after Anderson's next move, e5, white's now threatening knight takes g7 with checkmate. Uh, so basically knight takes g7 is threatened, the queen has just been blocked off by this e5 pawn from protecting g7, and knight takes g7 followed by bishop c7 will be checkmate. Okay, so black begins though by playing queen takes a1 with check but after king e2 the threat is still there of knight takes g7 followed by bishop to c7 checkmate black now plays knight a6 to guard the c7 square but now comes knight takes g7 from anderson with check king d8 is the only move and now anderson finishes off black i wonder if you can spot the mates i'll give you a couple of seconds to see if you can figure it out So if you spotted this, you're a very strong player. He played queen f6 check. The point being is now the knight on g8 is actually overloaded. Okay, black can take the queen, that's what happened in the game. Knight takes queen. But the point is the knight's moved off the g8 square and the e7 square is now weak. So Anderson just played bishop to e7, which is checkmate. And Anderson won the game. So this was a nice game from 1851 played by two very strong players of the time. I hope you enjoyed my analysis and I hopefully see you soon with another chess video. If you did like the video, please do drop a like, comment or subscribe. It really appreciates it. I tried to answer all the questions in the comments. Anyway, see you soon.